All right, my machine is loaded with shot. I'm ready to go. The next step, as silly as it sounds, is to plug this bad boy in. This is designed to run off of 17 amps, or it runs right around 17 amps, which means it's gotta be plugged into a 20 amp circuit. This machine comes with a 20 amp plug. If you've never seen one of these before, you've got a ground pin, and then your actual pins up here are perpen one of them is perpendicular to the other. You're going to have to either plug this into a 20 amp extension cord, or you're gonna have to get an adapter that goes from 20 amp to 15 amp if you wanna use heavy duty extension cords that you already have. Or I know some guys just go ahead and change out the plug on this machine, but I caution against that. This is there for a reason. Since the happy place for this machine is between 14 and 17 amps. And I'd really tell you it's happier at about 17 amp draw. If you put a 15 amp plug on here and somebody goes and runs it and tries to draw 17 amps through a 15 amp circuit, the best thing they might do is pop a breaker. So my suggestion would be to leave the 17 amp on here, get an adapter or build out a nice heavy duty extension cord that you can use on the job site. If you're plugged into a generator, most of them have a 20 amp plug, you should be good to go. If you're working in a house, you need to be aware of what the power supply is that is available to you. My garage personally has a 20 amp supply. I've got 20 amp plugs. So I'd have no problem running this in the garage on shore power. Uh, but if I showed up at a job site and I saw a 15 amp plug, I'd have to make a couple of adjustments. And the first thing I would need to do is make sure that my machine is not gonna pull more than 15 amps. So if I'm on a 15 amp circuit, what I'm gonna try and do is set this machine to draw right around 14 amps. And I would do that by adjusting this bolt here. If I back the bolt out, it allows the shock control valve, it's just a little butterfly valve in the bottom of the hopper to open a little more fully. More shots gonna flow through the machine so I'm gonna have a higher amp draw. If I screw the bolt in, it limits how far that can open. It doesn't open as much, less shot is gonna flow through the machine, so I'm gonna pull less amps. So what I might do is just push that in more than I know I need to, run the machine for a pass, see where my amp draw is at. Okay, I'm pulling 12, I'm gonna back it out a little bit, get it up to that 14 mark and I'm good to go on a 15 amp circuit. If I'm on a 20 amp circuit, I definitely wanna be running at 17 amps. And if you're ever running at 11 amps, you've gotta do something, something's not right. Either you don't have enough shot in your machine, your brushes on your motor are worn out, or your shot valve isn't opening enough, but a lot of guys will start running these and they're scared about pulling too many amps or profiling the floor too much. But if you're running at 11 amps, your machine's not gonna be productive and it's gonna drop shot every time you try to use it. Because this machine is a 17 amp machine, that doesn't leave a whole lot of room on the circuit for anything else. So I told you earlier, you've always gotta use a dust collector along with your shot blaster. So that means you need two circuits, two 20 amp circuits to run these machines or a 20 amp and a 15 amp circuit to run this pairing. So my suggestion would be if you've got a generator, it's got one 20 amp circuit on it, that's awesome. Run the shot blaster off of that. Find somewhere to plug in the shot blaster. If a generator's not an option and you've got shore power for both machines, whatever the furthest run of your extension cord is, plug that into your dust collector. Whatever your shortest run of extension cord is, use that to run your shot blaster. My recommendation for these guys is to use a 12 gauge extension cord minimum. What it really ensures is that you're getting the right amount of power through that cord and you're doing it safely so that you don't potentially cause a fire somewhere along the line. So you'll have seen a few times in this video, I have talked about amp draw and that really doesn't mean anything to you unless you've been running these machines for a long time. The amp draw on this amp meter is how hard the machine is working. And what that's really measuring is how much shot and silica dust is flowing through the machine at any given point of time. So I've said the happy place for this machine is right around 17 amps. And if I'm higher or lower than that, what this is gonna tell me is that something's going on with my machine. If I'm blasting along happily at 17 amps 
and over time it's starting to get a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, that gives me an indication of I might be running out of shot. Shot is still a consumable. Out of a 50 pound bag, you'll get on average maybe about 2,000 square feet. So you might start to notice that if your amp draw is dropping off, it's time to top off your machine with some additional shot. On the flip side of that, if you start to see the amp draw get higher and higher and you open up your machine, what you might find is that there's a lot of silica dust in there. And what that's telling me is that your dust collector isn't pulling enough of that dust out. So it could be that you don't have enough CFMs. It could be that your hose is too long from the machine to the dust collector. Could be that you have dirty filters over here on the dust collector side but that higher amp draw is telling me that the machine is having to work significantly harder. Once you've got it dialed in, as long as you're kind of right around there and staying there, then you're good to go. A couple other things. The reason you're using this machine is to get a certain concrete surface profile, a CSP number. So we've got these great chips from iCry. They're phenomenal. Whenever you're putting a coating down, that manufacturer has specified the particular CSP that they need. Um, shot blasters are great for giving you a three CSP, which is a really good um, level for a lot of the different coatings that are out there. I'm not gonna talk about anything specific, but that is typically what you would get with the shot blaster. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video. I hope that going over all of this helps you get familiar with your A95 a little bit better. If there's anything you think I didn't cover in this video, or if you've got any questions, please reach out to us, um, go to our website, give us a shout. We would love to hear from you and help you out. Thanks so much.